It's been suggested that ancient Egyptians would use the Sphinx in a ritual that reenacted the creation of the universe. It was performed at dusk as night was falling upon Egypt. This was considered the time before creation began when Hugh, the Sphinx, sat silent. When the signal was given, the sound of the first word of creation filled the air. As people made the sound, they recognized as that breath. Who? <laughs> this word, the word of God, would be chanted all through the night, symbolizing the night of progressive creating. The final act of the ritual came at sunrise. As the sun rose out of the east and the last breath of Hugh was recognized. Shri S.R.I. Harold Kemp. Uh, Harold Klemp. K-L-E-M-P-T. Spiritual leader of Ekankar Notes. Hugh is the ancient name of God. A love song to God. When soul has heard this sound, soul yearns to go home. Ekankar uses the singing of Hugh's name as a spiritual connection to the heart of God. They sing the name Hugh to draw closer to the divine being. For the people who follow this faith, faith that the desires are reported to be loved, Freedom, wisdom, and truth. Ekankar teaches a spiritual essence. The light and sound connects everyone with the heart of God. This light and sound is the ECK or Holy Spirit. Direct aspects of God opens the deep spiritual potential within each of us. The light and soul purify uplift and direct us on our journey to home the egyptian book of the dead the papyrus of ani mentions their ceremonies of hue and saw one can only speculate as to the nature of such rituals and ceremonies could they be talking about the ancient rituals involving the sphinx Hugh may be considered a minor god in some ways, but it obviously it, it's obvious that Hugh was a not so minor god to most ancient Egyptians. Now I'm almost done, so don't worry about it. Um, I'm getting started now with Ptah, and then I will go into Hekar and. I will be done. I am... Yeah, no, Sekar. Sekar. Now, Ptah. P-T-A-H. Capital P at the beginning. In Egyptian mythology, Ptah uh, is the demiurge of Memphis, god of craftsmen and architects. In the triad of Memphis, he is the husband of Sekhmet and the father of Nefertum. He was also regarded as the father of the sage Imhotep. The Greek knew him as the god Hephaest Hephaestus, and in this form Manetho made him the first king of Egypt. Ptah is the patron of craftsmanship, metalworking, carpentry, shipbuilding, and sculpture. From the Middle Kingdom onward, he was one of five major Egyptian gods, with Ra, Isis, Osiris, and Amun. Amun. He wears many epithets that described his role in Egyptian mythology and its importance in society at the time. Ptah the Beautiful Face, Ptah Lord of Truth, Ptah Master of Justice, Ptah who listens to prayers, Ptah Master of Ceremonies, 
Ptah, Lord of Eternity. Ptah is the Creator God par excellence. He is considered the Demiurge who exists between all things and by his willingness fought the world. It was first conceived by thought the, and realized by the word. Ptah conceives the world by the thought of his heart and gives life through the magic of his word. That which Ptah commanded, that which Ptah commanded, was created. With which the constituents of nature, fauna, and flora are contained. He also plays a role in the preservation of the world and the permanence of the royal function. In the 25th dynasty, the Nubian pharaoh Shabaka would transcribe on a stella known as the Shabaka Stone, an old theological document found in the archives of the library of the temple of the god at Memphis. This document has been known as the Memphite theology and shows the god Ptah, the god responsible for the creation of the universe by thought and by the word. Like many deities of ancient Egypt, he takes many forms, though one of his particular aspects or through syncretism of ancient deities of Memphite region, he is sometimes represented as a dwarf, naked and deformed, whose popularity would continue to grow during the late period. Frequently associated with the god Bess, B-E-S, capital B, at the beginning, he, his worship then exceeded the borders of the country and was exhorted throughout the eastern Mediterranean. Thanks to the Phoenicians, we find figures of Ptah in Carthage. Ptah is generally represented in the guise of a man with green skin. Interesting. Contained in a shroud sticking to the skin, wearing the divine beard and holding a scepter, combining three powerful symbols of Egyptian mythology. The was scepter, the sign of life, Ankh, the, the Jed Pillar. From the Old Kingdom, he quickly absorbs the appearance of Sakar and Tetan. Sakar is spelled S O K A R, capital S at the beginning, and Tetanen is spelled T A T E N E N, capital T at the beginning. Ancient deities of Memphite region of the Memphite region. His form of Sakar is found contained in its white shroud, wearing the Atef crown, Atef, A T E F, capital A at the beginning, and a tribute, and a tribute of Osiris. This is. In this capacity, he represents the god of the necro necropolis of Saquara, S-A-Q-Q-A-R-A, -A, capital S at the beginning, and other famous sites where the royal pyramids were built. Gradually, he formed with Osiris a new deity called Ptah Stakar Osiris. Ptah, P-T-A-H, slash, Sokar, S-O-K-A-R, slash, Osiris, O-S-I-R-I-S. Statuettes representing the human form, half-human, half-hawk, 
or simply in its falcon form will be systematically placed in tombs to accompany and protect the dead on their journey to the west. The Tetanin form is represented by a young and vigorous man wearing a crown with two tall plumes that surround the solar disk. He, th he thus embodies the underground fire that rumbles and raises the earth. As such, he was particularly revered by metal workers and blacksmiths, but he was equally feared because it was him who caused earthquakes and tremors of the earth's crust. In this form also, Ptah is the master of ceremonies for Heb Shed. H E B capital H at the beginning and said S E D capital S at the beginning. A ceremony traditionally attesting to the first thirty years of the Pharaoh's reign. The god Ptah could be opposite the sun god Re or Aten during the Amarna period where he embodied the divine essence with which the sun god was fed to come into existence, that is to say, to be born, according to the Memphite mythological text. In the Holy of Holies of his temple, the Memphis, as well as in his great sacred boat, he drove in procession to regularly visit the region during major holidays. Ptah was also symbolized by two birds with human heads adorned with solar discs, symbols of the souls of the god Ray. And you, these rays are spelled R E, not R A. The Ba. The two Ba are also identified as the twin gods Shu and Tefnut. Shu, S H U, capital S at the beginning, and Tefnut, T E F N U T, capital T at the beginning, and are associated with the, the Jed pillar of Memphis. The Jed, D J E D, all lowercase. Finally, Ptah is embodied, embodied in the sacred bull, Apis, frequently referred to as Herald of Ra, a sacred animal, is the link with the god Ra from the New Kingdom. He even receives worship in Memphis, probably at the heart of the great temple of Ptah, and is and its death was buried with all the honors due to living to a living god in the Sharipium of Sakura. Ptah was assimilated by the Greeks to the god Hephaestus. No, Hephaestus or Hephaestus, and then by the Romans to Vulcan. Okay, development of the cult. As god of craftsmen, the cult of the god Ptah quickly spread throughout Egypt. With the major royal projects of the old kingdom, the high priests of Ptah were particularly sought after and worked in concert with the vizier somehow filling the role of chief architect and master craftsman responsible for the decoration of the royal funerary complexes. In the new kingdom, the cult of the god would develop in different ways, especially in Memphis, his homeland, but also in Thebes, where the workers of the royal tomb honored...